All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this lead time battery. And you can see on here, there's a couple of things that tell you what it is. It's a lithium iron phosphate, uh, 100 amp hour battery, and it's rated for 12.8 volts as its nominal voltage. If you take a look up here, and I love that this battery has all this labeling and branding on it. It says it is smart, which means it has Bluetooth in here. So you can control this from a phone, a tablet, a laptop, maybe not a laptop. Uh, but it, it does have Bluetooth controls and a Bluetooth app, and it is a Group 24, so it's actually relatively small for 100 amp hour battery like this. Now, it's not designated as a mini. You'll see some of these battery companies are putting out 100 amp hour mini batteries, so this is a little bit bigger than those, but a little bit smaller than the standard size that we typically see. Before we get too started in this video review, I did want to say that I was contacted by the fine folks at Lee Time, and they asked if I would do a review of this battery, and I like batteries and I like reviews, so of course I said yes. That means they sent this battery to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. <coughs> Innovate without limits with PCBWay.com. Enjoy top tier PCB manufacturing and assembly services that offer exceptional quality at prices that won't break your budget. With swift turnaround times and reliable worldwide shipping, your projects stay on schedule no matter where you are. From initial prototypes to full scale production, PCBWay.com provides unmatched value and customer support every step of the way. Experience the difference a dedicated partner can make. Visit PCBWay.com today and bring your electronic creations to life. All right, now that we're back, we're gonna take a little bit of a look at some of the other things on this battery. So what I'm gonna do is tilt it up. And it's a little heavy, it's not super heavy, but we'll go into all the specs. You can see my whole desk shake when I do that. And here we have more information on the top. So first thing I wanna point out is we have a QR code here where you can scan this and then you can get the app for your Apple or for your Android Google device. It also has things like the URL for the company website, which is fantastic, and it has an email address to contact support or service in the event that you need that. Again, here's a Bluetooth designation. And we have some more specifications here. And again, I love when batteries are labeled like this. So I do get batteries to test that don't have any writing on them, really, other than just a brand name. And I like to be able to look at the battery itself and understand what I'm working with. It makes it much easier to find a battery for the appropriate use case and understand the uh, specifications and the performance, expected performance of the battery. Here you can see we have our nominal voltage, we have our rated capacity, our rated energy in watts, which is 1,280. The charging voltage of 14.4 plus or minus 0.2 uh, volts. And then you have your max continuous discharge current, 100 amp. Uh, this battery will likely discharge more than that, but I wouldn't recommend it for extended periods of time, obviously. And then max continuous output power, 1,280 watts. Another thing is it has these M8 posts here, and you just screw in a little bolt, an M8 bolt in here, and you connect your wires that you're going to power your stuff from. What I like about this is one is red and one is black, and they're labeled here. Now, when they label the batteries like this, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see, so the added feature of the color on here is pretty handy. And this is important because sometimes the left one's the negative, and sometimes the left one is the positive, but uh, here we have positive and we have negative. I've also gotten batteries, and I've done reviews on them, where the color on these terminals is the same, and these can be a little bit hard to read like I just talked about, so I don't like when they do that. This is very good. And then also has these plastic handles that you can carry it around. Sometimes batteries will come with a nylon strap. Sometimes they come with handles. I don't really care either way, but these handles seem like they're going to work just fine. Then on the back of this battery, we even got more stuff. And on the back, what we have here is probably more like safety information. And there's some cautions and some do nots. And I'll let you read that. I'm not going to run through it. There is some of the temperature specifications down here. Also, it has all these little icons and labels to tell you how to behave when you use this. And I think it has some icons and labels on the front for certain uh, accreditations that the battery may or may not have. Here is a QR code that you can scan to get instructions. Again, super duper handy if you're using this out in the field. You can just point your phone at this and then go to the website and see what's doing. Made in China. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that ships with this, like the instruction manual and the post terminals. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is this little plastic bag. And it's not really a bag, it's more like bubble wrap, wrapped around stuff. 
But if we take a look, we've got a couple of washers here, which is fantastic. We have some of these M8 bolts that I was talking about, and they have a lock washer and a regular washer on them. We have two, one for each terminal. And then it comes with these plastic tops, and you just put these on top of your bolts like this, and it gives you short protection in case something falls across the terminals or something along those lines and kind of protects these a little bit. So it's a good thing to have, and I'm glad they include it. They also sent this plastic envelope full of stuff, so let's see what it is. All right, typically they have things like stickers in here, so we'll look for that first because we like stickers. And here we go. We have some Lee Time branded stickers that we can put all over our equipment and gear. Let's see, we also have this quick start guide. And let me zoom in on this so we can get a little bit of a better look at it. All right, and I guess it's a service card. You can put your start date and your order number on here in case you need this. And some notice before use. It talks about what comes with it, an operation guide and a product manual. It tells you to wear insulating gloves and it has some information around storage and charging capacity. And it has some more stuff on the top around, I guess, insulation and connecting these things up and recharge cycles and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to look at that. Now there's something here that says life and discovery. And I don't know what this is. Now, this looks like it's just marketing material for their products and stuff. We're not going to look at that either because we're interested in this battery, not other batteries. All right, here's what I really wanted to look at, the product manual. Oh, and I want to say that there's going to be a link to lead time below where you can go and you can learn more about this battery if you want. And you can see the price. Right now it's about $209. I'll have a 6% discount link below and also have a link for Black Friday sales. So you might be able to get a little bit cheaper than $209 and then couple that with the coupon code. All right, let's tear into this manual and see what we have. And we have a table of contents and it talks about the additional components that came with it. So it gives you some specification around the terminal bolts that we just looked at. It looks like they're around five uh, eighths of an inch tall. So we have some safety instructions and I would encourage everybody to read this and I would encourage you to pay close attention if you're not used to working with these kind of batteries. They, char they store a lot of energy and you got to be safe. You don't want anything to happen. Also some warnings. We're not going to go through that right now. Here's a more in-depth table of contents. And here we are with our battery parameters. And I think we covered most of this. We did not talk about internal resistance of a little bit less than or equal to 40 million ohms. It says it has 4,000 cycles. Charge method CC and CV. And there is a charge voltage. And here it says recommended charge current 20 amps or 0.2C. When they talk about things in terms of C, 1C is the capacity of the battery. With these types of batteries, they always recommend that you charge them for optimum battery health at 20% of capacity, or 0.2C. That's how that number comes about. Peak discharge current, 500 amps for one second. Don't do that long term. And then we already talked about max continuous output charging. Here are the product dimensions, and that's not in American. That is in European metric stuff. So I'm going to say the battery is smaller than normal. And what we're going to take a look at the... Material is uh, flame retardant plastic, ABS, which is great. There's some torque information on there, IP65. Here are your temperature ratings. Don't charge it anywhere outside of 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is freezing here in America, up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, your discharge, discharge uh, temperature is negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 140, and then storage from 14 to 122. It does have low temperature charging protection. And it says res resume charging temperature under LTCP, and that is uh, 41 degrees Fahrenheit battery temperature. And there's an FCC ID in case you want to look that up. Stuff to know before using and charging methods. We're not going to cover that. I just use my standard lithium iron phosphate charger, and it works great. Uh, here it is in use with an alternator and a generator. Some information around... Uh, estimating your battery capacity and state of charge. So this is really good information. And what I like about companies like Lee Time is that they actually include educational content about the battery. What I don't like is when you get a battery and it has like one piece of paper that just has some generic specifications on there. A lot of times folks buy these batteries and it's the first time they're buying a battery like this or using a battery like this. So the addition of this type of information is very helpful for consumers like that. Here's some great information around cable sizing. The size of your cable 
Uh, it does a couple of different things. One is, is it makes sure your energy flows properly without resistance. When you have resistance, those cables can get hot and that can be a little bit dangerous. Also, you lose energy during that heating up process. Some information about connecting these in parallel and series, if you choose to do something like that. It tells you to wear your insulating gloves and gives you some pictures and diagrams, which is awesome. I like it. And some troubleshooting steps in the event that your battery stops working. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to connect this battery up to a measuring device or a meter. We're going to do a capacity test and see how much juice is actually in that box. Okay, in order to do the capacity test, we're going to use this West Mountain Radio CBA5. What it does is it puts a load on the battery. We are going to do 10 amps on a 100 amp battery. That's going to take us 10 hours to complete. This thing does get a little hot, so we have to be careful. When you take a look at the controls, we have a light that lets us know when it's on and plugged in. We have a light that lets us know that it's operating. It has Anderson power poles that we're going to use to connect to our battery, and I'll show you that. And then it has this USB-C or USB-A plug that goes to the computer and allows us to control this via the software. And we'll take a look at that software in one minute. Okay, and so here you can see the battery and we have this wire connected to the terminals. Here's the positive and the negative. This wire is 10 gauge stranded copper and I believe it might be copper clad aluminum. I'm not 100% sure, but it's the cable that I use when I test all the batteries this way and it seems to work just fine. So I just take my USB cable and I'll plug that into this. Once that happens, this light comes on and I get an alert on my computer. And then I just take this Anderson cable. This is the other end that's connected to the battery. And then I just connect it right here. And I got buttery fingers, so let's see what happens. There we go. All right, let's take a look at the software. Okay, so here is the software, and the first thing I need to do is go over here and click New Test. And this is going to create a new test for us. And when I pick this, it's going to ask me some questions around the battery type. It says lithium iron phosphate 4, voltage 13.6. Now this was charged at capacity two days ago, and I let it sit and rest. So I'm going to hit Detect, now it says 12.9. So let's go ahead and come over here and we take a look at our discharge section and here we have a cutoff voltage of 10 amps that's what i always do for these tests the bms might be a little bit higher might be a little bit lower than that i don't know i didn't check it and uh, we're going to run this at test amps at 10. so that means this is a 1c discharge now a lot of times for these tests people do a 2c discharge or 0.2c i should say and that means 20% of capacity. This is a 100 amp hour battery. We are doing 10 amps. So that is 10% of capacity. So it's 0.1C. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click start. And there's our test. We'll come back a little bit later when we have some updates. Okay, our test is done. And we can take a look over here in the upper right hand corner. And you can see that our test results are complete and we were at 98.448 amp hours. So about an amp and a half, just a little bit more than that, um, underneath the specified rating. But uh, you have margins of error in these kind of things. And while I'm not trying to give it a blanket pass, I think I'm going to say that that's good enough for me. Uh, not upset about that. So you can see over here on the left hand side, when we went and did the initial test, the battery was showing around 12.75 uh, in terms of voltage, which went up to 13 once we put a load on it, and then it settled out around 12.89. And that continued on to about 85 amps when we started to drop down about 12.5 uh, volts. Actually, it was around 80 when that happened. Uh, you can see our watt hours were 1,245, and the test ran for 590 minutes, so it's about 10 minutes less than we expected. The test stopped once the battery hit 10 volts. That was the threshold setting that I had set, and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. When we take a look at these uh, lithium iron batteries, they follow, here's a different battery, they follow a pretty typical thing. So here you can see uh, we started this battery out at 12.8. It went up to around 13 and a half and then dropped down. And then right around that 85 amp hour mark right here is right around where we hit around 12.5. So it's pretty similar to other tests that I have run and I'm pretty happy with the results. So in terms of capacity test, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give this battery a pass. 
using the QR code on the battery, I was able to download the app to my iPhone. You can see here on the left-hand side, this is a screen cap when I was charging the battery, and it tells me things like state of charge, the power, current, voltage, and capacity. It also had some icons on the bottom for checking the balance, the cells, and the BMS, and I included screenshots of all of that. I found the app to be pretty useful and pretty handy. What a mess of wires. Anyhow, we have our battery connected to everything. We have a clamp meter so we can measure amps, and we have a voltmeter that goes into the terminals on the back of our pure sine wave inverter. We have a Kumin watt meter, which allow us to look at how many watts are being output by the inverter. And we're going to use everybody's favorite, the heat gun from Harbor Freight. So once we get this baby turned on, we can see that our voltage at the inverter input is 13.36. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up our Drill Master heat gun. And when I do that, you can see we're pulling about 57 amps out of the battery. And our voltage has dropped down to around 12.8, which is perfect. I'm not upset by that at all. And you can see we're pulling a little over 600 watts out of the inverter. Switching the heat gun to high takes us up to 1,201 watts. And we are pulling 117 amps, which is higher than the rated output of the battery. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my space heater and hook that up. Okay, you can see the space heater on the right-hand side of the screen. I just have to plug this in, and it doesn't look like I'm doing a very good job of that. Let's see if it powers up. It does, and we're on, and we're drawing current from the battery. And you can see that climbing on the Kai Wheat uh, meter that we have clamped onto the positive lead. And you can see that we have some uh, voltage sag, but we're at 12.2 now, and we're going to turn the heat gun on, and that's just going to continue to pull on that. We're pulling around 1,300 watts out of the inverter, and we are definitely overusing this battery. We have about 140 uh, give or take uh, watts amps coming out of the battery and then you can see that the safety features just went off I'm going to say that the battery has the output it says all right so we're going to wrap this up by saying the lead time battery 12.8 volts 100 amps I like it anyhow if you have any questions comments suggestions or recommendations go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond as always thanks for watching